Now I'm gonna go over the brain. The first thing I wanna tell you is that we have two models, um, tan and then also colored. And I got two halves of the um, tan brain so you can see how they fit together, right and left here. And the right and left um, parts of the brain are called cerebral hemispheres, the right and left cerebral hemispheres. So if you look at the surface of the brain, it's certainly hard to tell where do the different lobes start and where do they begin. Now the lobes of the cerebrum, so first I should tell you what the cerebrum is. All of this lumpy, large area here is the cerebrum, and it's hard to tell where the different lobes um, are separated from each other, but you do know from the skull chapter that if this is the anterior part of the brain over here, this is the frontal lobe, and then this is the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe. So you already know those, but again, how do you tell what's what? So that's why I have the colored brain, so I can show you that. In red, from here to here, all the way forward, is the frontal lobe, and then the, the blue, blue and purple in here is the parietal lobe, and then uh, in yellow is the temporal lobe, and at the very back, the base here, is the occipital lobe. And at, under the cerebrum, so this, my hand is covering the cerebrum, um, inferior to the occipital lobe is a different structure called the cerebellum. But now let me go back to the tan brain. Oh no, let me first say that the dividing line, the boundary between the red and the blue is a deep groove. Remember all the grooves on the surface of the brain are called sulci is, um, sing is plural, sulcus is singular. And this right here is the central sulcus. It divides the cerebrum uh, into frontal lobe and parietal lobe. And on the test, you won't have to figure out where exactly that is because <clears throat> if I ask you about the different lobes, which I probably will, right? Um, you, I would put the arrow like all the way forward for frontal, um, right in the middle here for parietal, temporal would be here, to make it more obvious, and then occipital would be way back here. So you don't need to worry about where exactly are these divisions, but I will, and then I will say also that the central sulcus, if I'm pointing to this right here, then um, you know that it's a central sulcus, but actually that is not on your list of things you need to know. So let's move on. Again, frontal, parietal, occipital, and then temporal, and then here's the cerebellum. So there are two ways you can look at the brain intact or a, a slice down the middle, and this is a mid-sagittal slice through the brain. So <clears throat> I wanna point out that the cerebrum, this big lumpy part here, has not been cut in a mid-sagittal slice. What I mean by that is that the cerebrum occurs in two cerebral hemispheres. They're separate from each other. So in a live brain, theoretically, you could put your fingers down in here and you would not be tearing any of the cerebrum because the right cerebral hemisphere is separated from the left cerebral hemisphere. Anyway, let's still look at the medial side of this mid-sagittal brain. Okay. So I say that the two cerebral hemispheres are, are separate from each other, but they are connected to each other by this structure right here, which is called the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is corpus starts with a C, callosum starts with a C, and this is shaped like a C if you turn it on its side, C. So corpus callosum, C, C, C. Inferior to the corpus callosum, is an egg-shaped structure here. And if you look real closely at the three dimensions, you see that there's like a space here. All of the spaces inside the brain, here's another space, they're called ventricles. And the ventricles um, are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. So this structure is called the thalamus. There are two thalami, they're both egg-shaped. This is the left thalamus because I'm holding the left side of the brain. 
inferior and anterior to the thalamus right here is this W-shaped region. Follow my pencil. It's shaped like a capital W. Okay, this area is called the hypothalamus. Hypo often means less than or below. In this case, it's below. It's below the thalamus, hypothalamus. And then suspended from the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland right there. You'll learn about that more later. And here's the cerebellum that I mentioned before. When the cerebellum is cut in a mid-sagittal section, you could see the white matter inside, and then the rest of this, the surface of it, is the gray matter. So now this area that my pencil is covering up is called the brain stem. And then down here, you can imagine the skull coming around. The occipital bone is over here, and it has that hole in it, the frame and magnum. Once the, the brain stem passes through the frame and magnum and comes out the other side. In other words, down here it would be the spinal cord. So the three parts of the brain stem are the medulla oblongata. Look at my pencil. See how I'm outlining the medulla oblongata. And that is attached to the spinal cord. And then this egg-shaped region here is the pons. You can see the bump over here. It really is egg-shaped. And then where the capital C is, this is all the midbrain. So midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata. And I'm looking real quickly through your list. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I did forget something. So back with the colored brain again. Remember I said that this dividing line between the red and the blue is a central sulcus. Remember, the folds of tissue on the surface of the brain are called gyri for uh, plural. Gyrus is singular. This red gyrus is anterior, so this is the temporal lobe, occipital lobe. That means this is anterior. This is the frontal lobe. So the posterior most gyrus of the frontal lobe that is colored in um, dark red versus lighter red. This is called the precentral gyrus, which is, um, it contains the primary motor area. So on your lab manual, they wanna know, uh, we wanna know the name primary motor area. And then uh, the dark blue strip is in the parietal lobe because the central sulcus separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. So this whole gyrus here is coming after the central sulcus, so they call it the post-central gyrus, but it contains the primary somatosensory area, which is a term that you need to identify in your lab. <laughs>